Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll try to understand as to how to calculate the mean path of a core. And this is part of chapter 1, magnetic circuit. And we'll also try to clarify some of the misconceptions that I myself had. Okay, when the core dimensions or the core uh, um, width is same, like here you can see it's 10 centimeter, this one is also 10 centimeter, this one is also 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter, then the calculation is very easy. The mean length, you know, this is the outer boundary of the core and this is the inner boundary of the core and in between dotted line shows the mean path. So we can easily uh, now calculate this if we kind of uh, draw lines like this. So this part is one length, let's call it L1. Similarly from here to here is another length, we'll call L2 and this one is also same as L1 and this one is same as L2. And how to calculate? You can start from any one side. I start from here, half of 10 centimeters, so it is 5, then 20 centimeter, and then half of 10 centimeter, 5. So L1 is 30 centimeter. And similarly, L2, half of this portion, now this is also 10, so half of 10 is 5, then 20 centimeter, and then half of 10 is 5. So this is also 30 centimeter and same way we can calculate these two sides also. So this is easy. The pro okay, the problem becomes complicated when we have the core with different dimensions. Like in this case, you can see the width of this portion is 10 centimeter, whereas the width of this portion or this portion and this portion, they are 15 centimeters. So basically, uh, what I did was that I treated them as two different cores as uh, shown here. I had separated this part and separated this part. And then I calculated this length from here all the way and I called it L1. And this length uh, uh, all the way up to this point, I called it L2. And then I calculated the reluctance by putting in the formula and these are the answers which were obviously uh, not same as what is the correct answer given in the book. So this is the correct answer. So instead of 1.43 I got 1.75 and instead of 2.76 I got 2.54. Then I had also tried uh, another uh, way I had separated this part this part separated and I call this as whole one L1 and this one L2 and calculated the dimension and then calculated uh, reluctance and obviously this answer was also wrong. And actually uh, a student pointed out that uh, there is something wrong with the answers. So I had to ponder it again and what I realized was that what I am not considering is that the length and cross-sectional area are related for finding reluctance. So like in this case, whatever is the length L1, here we have to use the corresponding area of cross-section. Cross and similarly for L2, we have to use the corresponding area of cross-section. Now let's see what I am trying to say. You see, when this part I'm including in the, the vertical bar whose area of cross-section is 10 by 10, then I'm making a mistake because this part or this part is not part of uh, the 10 centimeter, uh, uh, sorry, 10 by 10 cross-sectional area. Rather, it is part of this 15 by 10 cross-sectional area. So that was the mistake. And similarly, when I was separating this, then I was taking this as a length, uh, L2, and I was including this part and this part in the 
uh, area of cross section of 15 by 10 which is wrong this should have been part of the area of cross section here 10 by 10 okay so uh, the net result is that when it's solved we have to draw a diagonal here and draw a diagonal here and if you like you can separate the two like this and now this is L1 and from here all the way this is L2 and now we can easily calculate L1 so L1 is starting from here half of 15 so 7.5 then 30 and half of 15 7.5 so L1 is 45 centimeter and similarly L2 if we start from here half of 10 so 5 then 30 then half of 15 7.5 the top line then we come here half of 15 again 7.5 30 and half of 15 7.5 and then the bottom line again half of 15 7.5 30 and half of 5 remember this is 10 so half of 10 is 5 and so the L2 is 130 now with these two values uh, when we solve this question we get the perfect answer so this we have to keep in mind let me just clarify it with another example let's see this now uh, this has three dimensions you can see from here it is only five centimeter from here the width is 10 centimeter and these two top and bottom have 15 centimeter width so the area of cross sections will be different and therefore we have to now uh, deal with three lengths so again here i'm just drawing the uh, uh, joining the corners and then since there was no midline so i i just drew the mid part or the mean part of the two outer and inner and now we are ready to uh, um, name them i'm calling this parts as L1, this I'm calling as L2, this L3A and this L3B because they have the same width and so now we can calculate L1 from here half of 15, 7.5, 15 and again here half of 15, 7.5 that is 30 centimeter. Similarly L2 is also half of 15, 7.5, 15 and half of 15 so this is also 30 centimeter but in this this one this and this l3 will be from here now this this length uh, sorry this length up to this point is 2.5 half of 5 so half of 5 2.5 then 20 20 and this is 10 so half of 10 will be 5 from here to here so 5 and similarly at the bottom also same uh, 5 if we go in from here now 5 half of 10 then is 20 5 20 and this portion half of 5 is 2.5 so the total length is 55 centimeter so that is how uh, you calculate the length and then uh, you will not make any mistake in getting the reluctance values so I hope uh, you have understood this, give me your feedback uh, and thanks uh, my dear student, uh, I'll just put in your name here, thank you.